Hello, hello. Welcome to the Eddie Conversation Podcast. My name is Eddie V. Hill and I am your host. Uh, this is episode number 31, 32. Shucks, I forget which one we're on. But regardless, joining, okay. joining me today okay. is Mama Luz. And, uh, as you can see, he will only host me because I'm his great grandma. My great and grandma. I'm not great grandma. I'm Mama Luz. Mama Luz. I've never called you Mama Luz before. The great grandchildren are supposed to call me Mama Luz. Okay, well, it's that's news to me. Yeah, yeah. I'm grandma to the grandchildren, and Mama Luz to my great grandchildren and great great grandchildren. All right, Mama Luz. And Perfect. I am Luz V. Hill. Very proud to be the pa- mamita of this young man here. Mm-hmm. Yes, I am. Thank yes, you. I yeah. am. I'm very proud of what he's trying to accomplish. I hope him the best of luck. Oh, I, <laughs> I just, just hope that uh, one of these days we'll see his name up there on the Oscars. Yeah, that's uh, that's the plan. Um, we'll the, see today is the day after the ninety third Oscars. I'm ninety two years old. That's and, and this was this was the ninety third year of the Oscars. So you were uh, I was a year old. Oh, no, I wasn't born yet. Yeah, yeah, you were. I was born, born the, the year, year after. after. Yeah, Oscars. It started in twenty nine. In twenty eight, I was born in twenty nine. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Wow. All right. So that is uh, one good thing. Oh. Didn't think I was going to be here this long. Because I remember when Cinco was born, my goodness. That's me, I'm Cinco. I was already old. Because I was 40-some when your dad was born. Mm-hmm. Another 18, 20 years when you were born. Yeah, because I'm, I'm 31. So I was about 60-some. Yeah, you would have been in your 60s already by the, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So what, I guess question number one. Okay. <laughs> um, so, okay. It's, it's, a, it's a famous, I'll just jump with the, the famous story in the beginning. Uh, can you talk to me about what it, what it was like um, growing up before you got married? Okay. And, and what you recall from, from those days? Okay. Yeah, and then we'll and then we'll jump into uh, uh, meeting well, great grams. Well, I was born right here, right here, right just outside of Albuquerque, mm-hmm. about fifteen miles from Albuquerque, and even a little town. It's still a village. It's incorporated. The name of it is Peralta, New Mexico, and it's in Valenza County. And like I told you yesterday, I was born in Valencia County. Then I moved with my parents because they were contract mail carriers mm. for rural routes. And uh, my mom went to work in the Estancia area, which is in Torrance County. And I started school there at the age of six. I had lived there like a year. And I went to, through seventh grade in the Estancia schools, which is in Torrance County, mm-hmm. about 50 miles from here. Then we moved. I stayed there until I graduated from high school. Got five years of my high school, I mean, my eighth grade in high school there in Los Lunas. The name of the town was Los Lunas. And uh, it was during World War II that I was attending high school. Mm. So there were, there was, we didn't have many sports because of the the fuel shortage and all that, we were everything was um, uh, you had to have just a pound of sugar for so many yeah, days. Yeah, like rations. And, yeah. Uh, what rations? Yes. Yeah. So and there and my and I, the school was very small because they had drafted some of the eighteen year olds that were still like seniors in high school and mm. didn't graduate here. I may, they might have graduated while they were in the service. 
but they didn't graduate with us, so the school was not that big. We had seniors who were only 25. Mm. There was 20 girls and five boys in my class. Nice choice. <laughs> I lucked out. One of the guys was my boyfriend. Uh-huh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I always like to say that. <laughs> but uh, uh, we didn't, uh, they, they had basketball, boys basketball. But there was no football. They had stopped the football program since '42, and I, and I started this my, my eighth grade year in '43, I believe. And so there was no football, just basketball. There was no soccer. There was mm -hmm. uh, no volleyball. So it was just like. But we did have a, a walk-in theater. Mm -hmm. So all the kids went to the movie on the weekends, yeah. especially. They didn't have, the, the movie theater was open like six days a week. It was closed on Mondays. It opened on Tuesdays through s Sunday night. Mm -hmm. and, and I worked at the theater since I was like a junior, sophomore junior. Mm -hmm. I sold tickets yeah. at the theater. And uh, then I was start, I, when I graduated, I wanted to work. I had gone to Los Angeles as a junior, my junior year. Mm -hmm. When I finished my junior year, my mom let me go to L.A. because my sister lived there, see if I liked it. Mm -hmm. If I liked it, I could go work over there like she was working. And my dad had worked there during the, uh, when they were building the ships worked in the shipyards. Right, right. But I really didn't want to leave mother yet. <laughs> right, yeah, because we were talking, because I, I dropped by, for clarification, currently we're in Albuquerque, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, we were talking yesterday a little bit about the uh -huh. L.A. adventure, because uh, you were saying your older sister wanted to was more of the was more of the city girl and enjoyed the the alley experience. Oh, oh yes. And then you were saying that you're more of a of a of a town girl versus yeah. the city. So yeah, I uh, I don't really like country country with it. There's like no theater. There's no <laughs> roller skate roller skating can't drinks. Mm -hmm. We had that here in Los Lunas. Mm -hmm. And there was like uh, then there was of course a Sioux and it was free. All, all that entertainment you could, you could have, have more, but not so much that it overwhelms you. Mm -hmm. Right. Like the city, like the streets are just, there's just so many people walking at all times. There's, mm -hmm. the, the streets are always full. And a town, only when they're like, okay, a bunch of kids are going to a movie. Now that you see maybe a, a little bit of a crowd going in on the sidewalks, but but it, it doesn't last because you go into the building. Yeah, and uh, and in 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 LA, we like uh, uh, my sister lived in Hollywood at the time, and it was like it was it was it was just too much for me, and I I just I just wasn't ready to leave my mom, mm -hmm. and I came back and. Then, of course, I wanted to go, when I graduated from high school, I wanted to go to work. And uh, I went to work for, I went to ask for a job where this um, a doctor had just uh, been assigned a superintendent of this school. Uh, it was a, like a training school. And, uh, and he was looking for a private secretary, is what he called it. Mm -hmm. And he asked for it in his budget. And I happened to be one of the ones that went and applied, and he hired me mm. on the spot. Mm -hmm. I, he says, when can you come to work? And I says, today, if you want me to. <laughs> he says, no, Monday will be fine. Okay, okay. So I I went back home, told dad and mother that I had gotten the job. Oh, my dad was so excited because I was going to work for the state, okay. which was in New Mexico. And I, I worked there, and I worked there a whole year and a half. A year and eight months, but your grandfather came into the picture in 1948, 
Well, he watched into the slit, and I said, I watched out with him. <laughs> oh, dang. So actually, before we get into Great Gramps, I was curious, what... When you when you finished high school, you, you came back you came back from the LA experience. You finished high school, and then you said you wanted to get to work. Was there an expectation from your parents at that time on on what you would end up doing or what what they what wanted? What was the expectation you? of my parents? Yeah, uh, they thought that I was going to follow my sister. Mm. They thought that once I got there, I was going to like it like she like she did. Yeah. Yeah, she, my mother was like sort of flabbergasted that I wasn't interested at all. Mm -hmm. I did want to work, and I wanted to, like my idea of working, me working, was to help them. Mm. I wanted so much to help my dad and mother, because I, I don't know why I thought that they were struggling just because they were working. I guess that you think, that, I guess you start thinking that your parents are old. I guess that's it. Hmm. Because why would I? Because they always had their job. We, I mean, there was always a paycheck coming into my household. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't like we were on welfare or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Mother always had her rural route. My dad had his rural route. And, we, and like I say, we worked in the shipyards all through the war. Yeah, yeah. Up there in the LA area. Mm -hmm. Actually, he and my sister lived together. Mm. So, uh, so when uh, no, when I came back, my expectation was just working there in Los Lunas or maybe here in Albuquerque, if the Los Lunas uh, uh, job did not pan out. But it did. I had already worked a year and a half, and and it got bigger. Mm -hmm. It got bigger. It hired more employees. Have added more buildings to the campus. So I, I would okay. have been a sure thing in there because I was uh, the first one there. Yeah. Everybody that got hired later. Yeah. Including my mother who worked as a senior. Because mm. my dad passed away when she was only six. Mm. So she, at 62, she decided that she wanted to go to work mm. again. She was still healthy enough and she, uh, she applied with the seniors and they hired her. Mm. And they only went part time to work. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, so. I, I was. I was. Uh, now I was okay because uh, my youngest brother had finished high school by then, mm -hmm. and uh, mother was working what she wanted to do. She didn't like to stay just at home doing nothing, so she went to work, and. Uh, and she was happy, and so I decided that I'd go ahead and marry this guy that I liked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so so the family story is it's a very famous story in the family. I feel like I grew up with it for sure. Where um, my great grandpa Eddie V Hill Jr. because I'm the fifth, and you met at some point, and and the famous story is that you and you can if I. That you knew each other for ten days, yeah, and then yeah, and then you, you and, told me the second day on our second date, I'm going to marry you. Mm -hmm. And I said, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> and he says, You don't think so? I said, No, I want to, I want to work some more. I, I, I'd like to wait till I'm twenty-five. Because you were how old? 18, 18. Okay. I so turned 19 that year. Okay. Like in March. Yeah, I yeah. was 19. All right, you were 19, and you were you were hoping that you would wait till you were 25, but. Uh, and the end, and and then he said, "Do you go to church?" <laughs> that was one of his first questions, and I says, "Yes, I do." And he says, so, "What time is mass?" And I said, "We only have one mass. We're a mission." We're not a parochial, I mean, a parish. I said, we're not a parish. We belong to the parish of Isleta. Uh But I, I go at 10.30, because that's the only time we have Mass. Only one. So I, he, he believed me then that I did go to church, because it was only one Mass. Uh -huh. And he says, well, uh, 
on, on, on Sunday, he says, you want, why don't you go to Mass with me? I says, I've seen you in Mass by yourself. He says, no, you don't want to go to Mass with me? I says, yeah, if you, if you want me to go, I'll, I'll go. I, I didn't see anything. Sure, sure. Why not? It's harmless. Why, why not go on a date to church? <laughs> it's a classic move. So I, 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 he picked me up on that next Sunday. And every day, time we went out, he said, I'm going to marry you. I'm going to marry you. One day he said, I'm going to marry you. He said, I, I said, I know. And he says, you know, when did you change your mind? <laughs> this is what you've been telling me all this time. Let's just get married. But then we had to formalize it at the church. We got married in the church at the cathedral in Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. And because he went to school in Santa Fe with his brother, a Catholic brother, there at St. Michael's yeah. in Santa Fe. Okay. And so uh, it, it was just, it was about a very, very small wedding. Mm -hmm. Just the families were there. And we just got our license, went in and got married. No mass, no nothing, just got married. Yeah. But he had to be by the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. So we went in and got married, and that was it. Right. We've been stayed there together 72 years. So 72 years and 10 children. Have, ten, what, are, what, are the, what are the numbers? 10 children, yes. Five boys and five girls. Mm -hmm. And then do you know the numbers for the grandchildren? And and the... 20 grandchildren. No, 19 grandchildren. Okay. Jenny is the young. Jennifer is the youngest. Mm, mm -hmm. My youngest son has the youngest granddaughter of all the grandchildren. She's my little angel. Mm. She always comes in when I need her the most. It seems like oh. I don't know why, but she just appears. Mm. <laughs> I call her my little angel. And then I have uh, twenty-one great grandchildren, and I think you know twenty-two great grandchildren. And four great great grandchildren. Yes. Okay. Run amounts, amounts to about fifty or so. Yeah, it's uh. Fifty forty. It's quite. Yeah. It's quite the uh, the family tree. Yes. It, it wasn't. Now that I look back, it really wasn't that hard to raise the two children. <laughs> okay, so. And they were very helpful as they grew up. I'm sure. Because they all worked. They, st <laughs> <laughs> they were all put to work. They all complained about it now. They yeah. didn't complain to Grandpa then, but they do complain about it now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you put us to work. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. Okay, so where did you, so where did you two, you guys met, and then you guys moved to Chama at some point? How well, does first that, how of does all, it... we, got married, we got married, and we moved to this uh, uh, ATNS up station depot that, where the train stops and people board. And that's called Lamy, New Mexico. It's in Santa Fe County. Mm -hmm. And it's about seven, 15, 17 miles from Santa Fe. And we lived there four years because Eddie was a telegraph operator. Mm. And he did that for four years. But this opportunity came for him to, he had always said, I want to go into my own business. I want to have my own business. And I would like to go back to Chama and set it up because there were no service stations up there. Mm. Or there were stores that had like one pump for fuel. You had to pump it yourself. There was no service for tires or grease jobs or, and all the cars needed grease jobs in those days, mm -hmm. but there was none. You all had to go to Santa Fe or Spaniola or somewhere else. So he said, I, was, I, I want to put on my own business. So this opportunity came in like four years into our working here there in Lamy with the ATNSF. And I didn't ask any questions. I just went along. If that's what you can do, that's what we'll do. Mm -hmm. And we moved to Chama. We got this license to open up a bar 
and uh, he has talked to the Chevron people, Chevron Gas, Standard Oil at the time, hmm. and they said, yeah, they would help him put up a station up there. And it got going, and we were there more than 50 years. Right, Our youngest right. son runs, operates the place still. Yes, my uh, great uncle, Ernest. Uncle, uncle Ernest. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that that so Chama is is uh, is where I grew up. I grew up in Chama, New Mexico, and um, yeah, I grew up until I was eight years old there, and then that's when when my dad and, and our family yes moved out to Nevada yes. Um, but what? I want to know more because you kind of, you kind of glaze over it pretty quickly. But what is it like? You had a three bedroom house at some point in Chama, and you raised the ten kids in the house. So, like me thinking about raising a kid seems like a monumental task. But you say raising ten kids was not that big a deal. So how do, how how does that work? How did how did you? Uh, uh, how, how, you know, it, when we first moved, we didn't even have a house. Or apartments. There were no apartments, no houses available in Java for rent. Mm -hmm. But but this building that they built, where the where the bar and the was going to become a uh, what was it called, Mayor Linda? Oh, she's hiding. How did you say? She's not there. Oh, she's not there. Uh, the high country, it was a place that you could go and have a beer, or you could go and stay there and drink all night. You could dance. They had like mm -hmm. an odium that they played. And uh, and they were hot. so it was big enough that we, on the one, on one third of the, of the building was a showroom for our service station. The middle part was our three-room apartment where I put my children and me, and I had three children then. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the last four, third was my father's, um, my father-in-law ran the bar. So, so I had this place to live. I had a, a, like, like a front room that I had couches that turned into beds. Mm -hmm. Then I had the middle room that was all, be, a be, all bedroom, and then the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And I lived right there in that business. And I had Eddie, Mary, and Linda. Terry was born in August of that year. Then mm -hmm. we moved there. Mm -hmm. So now I had four children. And then I had Tommy the next August and the next October. Larkin. So I had six children living in that, that little three-bedroom apartment. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I do do look back. I, I don't know how I did it. But <laughs> Uh, they each had their crib, and I had that one crib next to a door to where you could hear the music from the high country, because it was right next door to the, the Nickelodeon was pretty close to the door. Mm -hmm. So, but the kids, the, the children, the baby that slept there loved it, loved the music. So, and you could hear the dancing and the hollering sometimes. Because there was a radar station nearby, about 20 miles away, and all the soldiers used to come on their day off or the weekends, and some would bring guitars, and mm. you could hear the guitars being played. So, and I lived there for, since 1952 that we moved there until 1956 that we finished building the house. And I, but we thought the house was big, but it wasn't. Uh, it was only a three-bedroom house, but I had, by the time, the, it was only just four boys at the time, because Eddie came to private school here in Santa Fe, and Mary went to St. Louis. Mm -hmm. They're the two oldest. She went with the Catholic nuns for mm -hmm. two years. Mm -hmm. Eddie went two and a half years to St. Michael's. I mean, to the seminary here in Santa Fe. Mm. And so that just left me four boys and four girls. And they could share. One had one room, one had the other room, and we had the other room. Yeah, the boys' room, the girls' room, and the parents' room. Yeah. And, and there was, I put double bunks. 
one bunk bed on that side, bunk bed on this side for the boys. Mm -hmm. The girls had a double and a and a twin. Mm -hmm. I mean a a, dub, a a a double bed and a bigger bed mm. and the crib. Mm. And the crib and the twins, mm. and I even had twins among those ten children. <laughs> the twin girls shared a crib. They, they, they slept in the same crib. I just put a gate between them because Joan had a habit of getting up in the morning and shaking Joanne. Mm. And Joanne at home. <laughs> it wouldn't wake up for him. So I didn't want her bothering yeah, her. Yeah. So I put a gate between them. Yeah. So she would stand. <laughs> she would still shake the bed with the gate, but she couldn't wake. Mm -hmm. So, but, but how was it? I, I guess it was hard. Yeah. But, and we I had to wash, okay. First of all, we didn't have running water. We, we did at the house, mm -hmm. only because we put an electric pump. Mm. We we dug a well. They put a, an electric pump on the well, and the water was pumped into there and into the house, uh, like like they do when they do the plumbing. Yeah. So I was able to. We did have uh, water, running water in the house mm -hmm. because of the electric uh, the electrical thing outside. But I didn't have a washer and dryer. I had to wash with a regular old washer mm -hmm. and uh, by by hand, you know, ring by hand and all, and then to hang outside. Mm -hmm. And in Chama, in the winter time, everything if you turn if you put a, a piece of cloth out there, it turns to, to ice skin. Or? It's like a piece <laughs> of skin. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, so a lot of times I wouldn't hang out too early so that they mm. wouldn't get like that, so that they could get some of the sun right away and start drying. And then as the wind would hit them, that would dry them up. Mm. Some, of, some of the Levi's did not dry up completely until I brought them in. But then I'd bring them in and put them on the hanger or something and they would dry up. Yeah, yeah. But it was hard when they were playing football, because I had to. I have not only had to uh, wash their, the uniforms they wore to play, I had to wash the uniforms they used to practice, mm -hmm. and that was hard because there was a lot of water to to have to like warm a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how did how did you guys? You and great grandpa, how was the, what was the, were there like any philosophies that you tried to instill on, on, on what? the kids? Like, what, what was the approach you and great, great grandpa took with raising the kids? Were there like, um, I was gonna say like philosophies or, um, methods or like, or, um, what's, what's, what's a good, were there, like, what were the lessons, the main lessons you were trying to teach the kids growing up or, like, the rules that you set? Because I hear stories on occasion how strict you, you and great-grandpa were on the kids or they seem like you guys were at the time with, with like, curfews and, and rules about hanging out with people. And how did, how did you guys come up with... Uh, come up with... Um, the way you wanted to 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 raise the children and stuff. Well, uh, when uh, uh, he always said, uh, "Are you talking about uh, having the children?" Yeah, having the children and and just and just the ideas on how you wanted to raise the children. Uh, well, we we just. At at one point, uh, you you try we tried to um, uh, do God's will. That's one good one thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, it wasn't. Uh, he he always thought that. Uh, we could handle uh, the many that we had. By then, 
uh, we just didn't have any more. But uh, it was it was getting to the point that uh, where I was going to have to do something for me, mm. from because of doctor's orders. Mm -hmm. And at that when Ernest was born. It, 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 I was going to have to do a lot of big decisions, mm. but on his own, God's will was done. I didn't have to go to no surgery, no nothing. Yeah, 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 that's great. That was great. Yeah. I mean, his faith is, was so strong, you couldn't, you wouldn't believe his faith. Mm -hmm. He was, I don't know if you heard Father Daniel. Yeah, yeah. When he said it. And and he, and he had his doubts, just like anybody else. But if you have if you have doubt, you have faith. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yes. Mm. If you have doubt, you have faith. Mm. Without faith, you don't have doubt. Mm. But you doubt. Ah, now your faith is coming through. <laughs> okay. Okay. It is. Yeah. All so, right. So, so it's just a, and it's just a matter of working to, when we, uh, like when the children were little, going back to when we were living like at the high country. Yeah. Uh, he, I would be bathing them, and I would put a tub, set with water, so I'd get the first one bathe Eddie, and hand him over to Eddie, my, your grandpa, and he'd get him and dry him up and put him in the steady bear pajamas, put him in bed. Come for the second one. Mm -hmm. So he helped me mm. help me that way. And he, no, Dad was very helpful mm -hmm. with the children. And he, he took them with him. When, uh, every one of them went with him. Like I think uh, I'm almost sure everyone went at at one time or another in the gasoline truck to deliver gas. So he didn't know where he, what Dad was doing. Mm. So. All that was done, and then he participated with them in basketball, because that's uh, no football too. And now we had football and basketball for the, the kids at that by then mm -hmm. in, in Escalante. They didn't have at that time soccer or volleyball yet, but they did have football and basketball, and all the kids played. Except, well, not the girls, but the boy. And the girls were in band. I took him to band practice, so, and the uh, the the boys were altar boys in the church, and the girls were in the choir, the ones that wanted to sing like Mary and Linda. So, uh, they were they were busy. So I, I, if you keep busy, you stay out of trouble. Mm. If you're busy, you stay out of trouble. Mm. And then I afforded them to, they could go to the drive-in theater and they could go up to the walk-in theater because we had, we had both. And sometimes they would ask me to go with them to the up, uh, the one inside. I don't know why, but uh, some of them, like Tommy and them, come on, Mom, let's go to the movie with us. Mm. So I'd go. I liked Elvis Presley anyway. Mm. I remember there was one movie I went to see, Elvis Presley and Nan Margaret. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice. <laughs> and and I used to, uh, we used to chaperone their dances, like their prom, and because they asked us, mm. not because we asked them, mm. they asked us to, like, the one time we couldn't ch chaperone Larkin's uh, junior prom. He asked us to, I, I don't remember why it was that we couldn't go. But we, uh, it wasn't easy, I'm sure. But now that it's over and done with, yeah, I, I go back and I say, how did I do it? And I, I really can't find the answer to that. Yeah. Other than that, maybe just that we worked together. Yeah, you just found a way, you got it done. Yeah, yeah, you had to do it, so it got, you, yeah. you did but, it. Yeah, and I guess it just, the. Uh, the, my hardships when I first moved to Chama, mm. and that's why I say country, country. Yeah, yeah. I don't like country, country. Was that I had to go next door neighbor, because we didn't have a well at the high country, for water. 
we had to go next door to the next door neighbors to her to her well and get water mm. for drinking and washing and everything. And that's pail after pail after pail, carrying water like that, and you're pregnant. That was hard. Now that was hard for me because mm -hmm. I didn't have to do that when, when I left Los Lunas. Yeah, yeah. We al we already had running water in Los Lunas, <laughs> and I had to go back. Crazy. I had to step back. Yeah, and, 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 until you guys. That, that was hard. I did cry a few times. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I did cry a few times, but I also cried when the twins were born, only because together. They could get into messes that you wouldn't believe. Mm. And I would catch them spilling the beans, the syrup. They were trying to cook. Dad finally crying. Why are you crying? You look what the girls did. <laughs> Making a mess. Making messes, Making yes. Making messes, yeah. Um, next question, uh, you, like you said, you're 92 years old. I'm 92. And, uh, a lot of people like to commend you on your, your great memory. You have a, yeah, I do have a good memory yet. So what are there, what, what? Are there, is there anything specific that you've done or that you can recommend for other people to try to do to be able to sustain? The memory? Yeah, the memory. What have you I done? Think, I, I, I think that my memory probably is that good. Maybe it's bragging a little bit, but I don't know. I, I think it's the way we were, what we ate when we were young. Mm. Here in Los Lunas, uh, we had all kinds of vegetables, and the one good thing, we liked them. Mm. We liked the tomatoes, we liked the lettuce, we liked the pickles, we liked the, I mean the cucumbers, radishes, uh, uh, cabbage, beets, corn on the cob. Oh my God, you can't beat that off right off the house. Oh. Mm. Green chili, I didn't eat, but they, we had the green chili. We had all kinds of vegetables. We had a Jersey cow with the best milk. We had homemade butter. Every I mean, we I never ate butter from bought butter. We all mm -hmm. we just made it at home. So it, I, to me, it was our uh, our diet when we were growing up. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. Because my my brother was seventy when he passed away. And he hadn't developed Alzheimer's. The others were young. Martha was only 52, and my other brother was 40. And Melvin is still uh, alive. Mm -hmm. He's 75, 74. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and I'm, I'm the oldest. And I'm pretty much the oldest of the whole clan, of the Carabajal clan, and uh, uh, because the Carabajal is, there's some living in Peralta yet, and there's one that's my age. He was born in May. I was born in March. He was born in May. The other one that was born in October passed away. Got killed in a car accident. So I'm the oldest of the whole brood of whole first cousins right now. Hmm. <laughs> but I, I I heard that Pancho uh, Frank uh, was put in an assisted living. Mm. Just recently, so mm -hmm. he's the one that's ninety-two, like me. We're gonna be now in May. Yeah, yeah. Cause I, know, cause I know. I think last time I was here, or or sometime, you mentioned that that you do you do stuff throughout the day to keep you to keep yourself occupied, right? Like you watch, like you watch the credits of movies. You like you read through stuff. You're always paying attention to uh, like I don't I don't know all the stuff you do currently. To keep yourself kind of uh, engaged. Well, I do. I uh, I get. Uh, uh, I work on crossword puzzles. Oh, yeah, yeah, the book. Yeah, you had the books over and, there. And uh, word church and and I like to work the one that's in Spanish and in English because I have forgotten a lot of the Spanish words because mm. the girls only speak English 
and uh, and so I'm forgetting some of the Spanish words, but with this little word search, it's just that big. And it tells me what it's going to look for. And then it says, here's the English interpretation, here's the Spanish. And I look for the words, and oh, that's the way you say whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've forgotten, you know. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when I'm not familiar with the Spanish words, that the, the subject they're talking about, I have a hard time finding the words. Because I always had a hard time with Spanish. Mm. I myself did not know how to read it. Mm. I could read English real good and write it, but not Spanish. Yeah, you were you're fluent in you 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 were fluent in Spanish, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I you I, just couldn't read it. I, I, I spoke. Uh, my first language was Spanish. Okay. When I went to school, I didn't know floor, rugs, walls, lights. Yeah, yeah. No, that was all Spanish. That's the residencia, la jerga, so fast. La Camara, no, 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 I didn't know any English. But I went to school and I started learning the English language and, and my one of my aunts used to call me La Inglesana mm -hmm. because I, I didn't want to speak Spanish when I went to school. I myself didn't want to. Mm. I don't know why. But but I was never embarrassed or I was I was never told. English only, or anything like that. Hmm. I went to school right there in Estancia, and I, I learned my English language there. And uh, I think I learned it really good, so. Okay, so, so you do the crosswords, and is there anything else that you, well, what else, what else are you up to? Did what? So you said you do you do the crosswords to keep to keep yourself oh, yes. kind of occupied uh, as a crossword there. puzzle, uh, search words. Word I search. read the paper. I want to I want to know what Biden is doing. <laughs> I wanted to do what old Trump was doing. <laughs> and I read those the the editorial letters uh, uh, or articles are the ones that I I like to read the mm -hmm. most. Mm -hmm. I'll read them about the killings and all that later. Uh, those are the ones that I want to that I want yeah. to read first. And you read it every day. Every day. Okay. In fact, when Gramps was still here with us, yeah. he'd say, "You're still reading the paper?" I says, "Eddie, I read the whole paper, and I do. Mm -hmm. I do. That has has to help. I'm sure. Yeah. And they made me get some hearing aids so that mm -hmm. I wouldn't be deaf." Like in a cylinder, <laughs> took me to get some hearing aids yeah. because they didn't want me to get like Gramps. Mm -hmm. Well, Gramps lost his eyesight first. Right. At 80, about 82. And, and then he lost his hearing. And now he's in all by himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How would you like to sit there with your eyes closed and not being able to hear a, a word? Yeah. I've tried it because now. Like this morning, I told John, I feel sick. I said, I can't even hear a thing. The TV on. she said, put it on. She says, yeah, it's loud. And she said, uh, like, how do you feel? And I said, I can't hear a thing. I feel like I have my head in a bucket. Hmm. Now, I can, I, I, I can believe Gramps feeling that way. It's like, close your eyes and you can't hear a word. Now I can hear all the sound that's going on. But when I don't yeah. have the ear, it's on, nothing. Mm -hmm. And it's just awful. It's terrible. It's, it's uh, deafening. Right, right. So I'm glad that, that in a sense, that they did make me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't put it on right away in the morning, except certain days Joan will say, oh, you better you better put on the, at least one here in each because there's something coming out on TV Yeah, that you might want to watch. And, and I, TV, I used, to, I used to watch it, especially when we could watch it together, the funny yeah, yeah. All the comedies that used mm -hmm. to come out. But when he stopped watching the comedies, he didn't like it. Like, I stopped watching it, too. I just put it on. And then when he 
when we were able to at least put a hearing aid on him so that he could hear the news. Uh, no, uh, Mary bought him some of those um, that you put on the ear that connect to the TV. Mm. Look behind the TV and you'll see some round things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mary bought him those. She, he would put those on and then he could hear, we would put it on 10 or 33 CNN. So he could, li or the, or the or, uh, local news, so that he could, uh, when he was still, when he still, when he didn't have Alzheimer's, before Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And then it went to that. That was the last thing he got, which lasted till the, well, just a year before he passed away. And then just for, for the people that aren't in the know, yeah, my, my great-grandfather, uh, Eddie Vigil Jr., passed away at 100 years old um, just a, a couple months ago, right? Yeah. He was, yeah, he was 100 years old, 100 and about 38 days old. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He uh, didn't get to see his uh, last two, no, only the last, yeah, one great-grandchild and one great-great-grandchild. Mm -hmm. He didn't get to know. Mm. That was uh, Aliyah's, uh, I mean, Jamie Lynn's, uh, Jamie Lynn's uh, little baby, I, I say, uh, he didn't know him, and he didn't know uh, Michael's little girl. Yeah, those two. Yeah, it's crazy because like like the fam the family is so big that even like I don't, <laughs> I haven't met a lot of the family myself. Oh yeah. Yeah, like there's so many, but it's so, and, and being that the family's so big, I'm sure there's like there's new babies oh, all the time yeah. these days. To meet, yeah, to meet just nine, just one of the nineteen uh, first cousins. I mean. The first, just to meet the first cousins, you have to meet 19 of them. Right, then right. to meet the ones in your group, there's 22. There's, there's, there's already, already all the populations of Shama. Yeah, right, right. If we were all living there. Yeah, it'd be the whole, the See, whole town. When, 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 uh, when uh, your uncles were going to school in Shama, there were there were more children because uh, mm. everybody had come back from the war and everybody in the Jama area had large families, eight and nine, fourteen, mm. twelve, and, uh, and so the schools were pretty pretty nice. They, they and they had a lot of friends, and then the, the government the people came with the. Uh, with the Esotea tunnel that they were building. That was a federal job. So it, it came with a lot of people, plus uh, the people from there that went to work. So there was like, they made a lot of friends. Yeah. They had a lot of friends then. And there was quite a, there was quite a few. Mm -hmm. Well, the government camp alone, you'll see it when you go. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not as nice as it used to be. All, all the ladies there kept their gardens there, like flowers and everything growing really nice. Mm. I don't think it's like that anymore, but maybe. I haven't been there in so many years. Yeah, yeah. I went for that little honoring that they gave Grandpa for the park, but uh, I, I haven't been mm. to be going around hmm. the park in, uh, in Jama. Yeah. I don't feel like going. It's three hours, and uh, I don't no. want to go to my house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You you spent enough time there. You're good. You're uh, good. Yeah, it was a nice. It I I feel good about my house. It was mine. I designed part of it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like the cabinets in the kitchen, in my kitchen, I I helped the man that made him design them. Mm -hmm. Because he wanted to, he wanted to cut him short. And, no, I don't know. And I said, no, no, no. We're going to do it this way. There you go. <laughs> it was my kitchen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got what you want. And, and now, now I wish I could go back and remodel it all inside, like the, I see those guys do. Mm-hmm. Oh, Ooh. right, right on the on those shows. Be nice. Yeah. Be a nice.
We had a nice little cottage now in Budnatsa. It's not a house anymore. Mm. And now it's like three bedrooms. It's so little. Mm -hmm. I wish now that I had had a five bedroom house. Mm, well, all my kids, oh, they would have really enjoyed it. You could stretch. <laughs> my, uh, your grandpa used to say, oh, it was more cozy this way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, maybe. Sure. You know, sure. they could have been, they had their own private space, they might have not bonded. Yeah. No, I'm sure there's a nice, there's a nice positive spin to, to put on it. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like yeah. it. They, they experience. They probably could give, tell you a lot too of what they experience. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Over the over the years with all the all the siblings, I'm sure uh, a lot, a lot, a lot yeah. happened. Yeah. Oh, for sure. You know, like maybe uh, maybe I'm just now I'm so old that I don't remember the the hardships, or maybe I didn't feel the hardship because yeah. maybe mine had been worse. Because yeah. I was I was little during the depression. I don't know what went on. Mm -hmm. All the thirties, I was just one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> then I started school at six. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I don't know. Like my poor mother, she only went to school to fifth grade, and she was so smart and talented. Hmm. Oh, she had talent. That woman. Crocheted, embroidered, sewed clothes. Uh, she made so many clothes for us girls, for me and my sister. Oh my gosh, she, she, I, I don't know, she used to can food. Oh my gosh. And never, never complained. Always singing, mm -hmm. whistling. Mm -hmm. and when she was out there with the garden, I, I didn't go out there because I was afraid of the animal. I don't like lizards and all that stuff. Um, my snakes, <laughs> I'm really afraid. <laughs> so, yeah. So I didn't help with the garden at all. Yeah. And it was a humongous one. Hmm. A whole acre out there hmm. of all kinds of food. But we never went hungry. <laughs> right, right. You were saying all the vegetables and... I kind of think that, that that was part of our... Do you know that my brothers all went into the service, like the National Guard and the Army and all that? And even my youngest brother, he's now like a 74, whatever, that they haven't found a cavity on their teeth. When mm. Arthur got into the National Guard, and they were checking over. He says, do you know that you don't have a single cavity? And he says, well, I, I've never, I, I've never felt that I have cavities, he told him, you know. You know, you haven't. You don't have any. And Junior the same way, you know, mm. cavities. And, and then when Melvin told me that, that he went for a uh, uh, checkup not too long ago, that they, Said you don't you know did you don't have any cavities? Hmm. Some good teeth, good yeah. teeth. Oh, it's surprising. I lost mine. He said because of because of my going. I was very anemic, uh -huh. and I'm still very anemic. Mm. I had to go for some uh, not blood transfusions. What did I have? Iron transfusions. Mm. Two two pints. A wire. I had to go. What did she take me once a week for two weeks? And Linda took me, but I can't remember now. Hmm. Yeah, I think so. I went and got one pint, and then I had to wait a week and went again. I got better, but when they did the last blood work, they found me a little anemic again, mm -hmm. and that's part of my. The. It's part of the my, the exhaustion. I feel sick. Yeah. Well. What can I do? Yeah. I, actually, I shouldn't complain. Living this long already. What do I have to complain about? No, dear Lord. <laughs> Jesus, I hear you. <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, uh, when I get when I get out of control, I say there's only one prayer I have now that I, that I can say can remember. Jesus help me. Jesus help me. <laughs> Jesus help me. That's a good one. It's a yeah, good one. That's, that, honest, that's what I say. Jesus help. Me. Mm -hmm. Uh, I some, sometimes I don't remember my prayers, mm -hmm. but I do remember Jesus help me. Mm -hmm. Oh boy! Oh boy! So I do want to ask. Um, so going back in time a little bit again, let let's say because you mentioned uh, Chama being kind of small. Chama's too small. It's too country, country. Okay. I was going to ask if. It, what, is there anything like what what when you were younger what was the what was the dream like what that was there a, an alternate reality that you my uh, our our dream when we went there was just to have our own business because that's what dad wanted mm -hmm. and uh, and just live there off of the business mm -hmm. until we retired and then just let it go to one of the children or sell it that and retire when we went to chama it wasn't it wasn't great but it wasn't as bad as it went hmm. uh, when we got there there was like a little bit okay there was uh, uh, logging troops they were doing a lot of logging that was the, like two or three big sawmills that hired a lot of help. And they did a lot of uh, really nice surfacing of lumber and all that. So, uh, and they shipped it out. But there was no running water. There was no sewer plant. There was no dump. Uh, they just, somebody just offered a piece of land where they could go and dump their dump. Mm -hmm. And then they found out that it was flowing into the river, hmm. and they didn't want that to happen. So they, they, the state came in and stopped it, or the county came in and stopped it. So we did not have any of those things when we first went to Chama. More people, yes, and more jobs, yes, because, like I say, the logging and the and the, uh, the sawmills. And uh, the electric wasn't good. They uh, still didn't have, the electricity would go off when you least expect it and stay off for a, for a while. A while. Mm -hmm. So then when, when Dad and Reverend Roseberry, Ossie Reeves, and Abe Gallegos and them got together, let's incorporate the town so that we can get some Money's revenue coming into so that we can build a water system, so that we can have uh, sewer, so that we can have uh, dump service, all the all the things that the uh, uh, let's say a town, a village, a town, yeah, like a, an incorporated village, an incorporated town, an incorporated city, a metro, anything that's incorporated gets help from the federal government. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what they were aiming at. And so they started drawing boundaries to where they would incorporate, incorporated the now, and that's how they got convinced that to run for mayor. And that's how he became mayor. And now he started working on getting the water system. Mm -hmm. And they got the water system in. Not, not far enough. It just barely went a few blocks. They ran out of funds. Mm. So they had to reapply with grants for grants to get more money to continue. And then comes the the, the the waste and all that that followed. And and of course then now you've got some interested people. Now the TV wanted to come in, which was good because now there's some people that are going to have money, and they're mm. they're going to want to stay. Let's get them some television. And TV, the TV said, just beginning to come into Chama in 1952. Hardly anybody had TV. And, uh, 
And so the, this guy came in and, and started putting in the, the wires for the, for the television. We weren't even one of the first ones to get TV. Actually, we didn't get TV till about 57, 58. Hmm. And we moved there in 52. <laughs> but there was no TV. Mm -hmm. And uh, like Aunt Lily had TV. Well, Eddie's sister. Yeah, our, our son, your grandpa used to like to go there in the morning, on Saturday mornings, to watch cartoons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She would let him He'd sit in the front room and watch cartoons at her house. I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and he was, uh, the reason that she was, uh, she used to really like Eddie, because he, she, he was the first nephew or niece that she ever had. Mm -hmm. She was the only one that had children. She had two. She had a daughter and a, and a son. And there was no more babies in, in the family. They were already 12 and 13 by the time your grandpa came along. Yeah, yeah. So she, oh, when she became aunt for the first time, she, she was wild. And she would take care of Eddie any time. So when he asked if he could go stay and go watch cartoons at her house, Oh, she was so pleased. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. he went and what? So see, it was uh, so the 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 daddy's dad's plan was just to get the water, the drinking water in Chama, because it was beginning to where they were saying that the water wasn't drinkable, that you couldn't drink it because it had. I can't remember the name of the things that water gets. Yeah, it was. and. Uh, and so and and Roseberry, Miss Brewer and Roseberry and them wanted good quality water, so they had to go in and dig first one well, then another well, and then get someone to run to operate them. You know, it's a good thing that there was a guy that had come to the University of New Mexico, and had gone back to Chama, and was going to stay in Chama, that took the job as uh, he was uh, the like the water man. <laughs> taking care that the water stayed, uh, checking it, that it didn't get uh, whatever it gets. Mm -hmm. And then when they up on the plumbing, he did a lot of the plumbing for this. Well, all the plumbing for the first part of the city. They did a, they did a lot of work. Mm -hmm. and, and then when we left, oh, and then of course, like I say, there was a walk-in theater and there was a drive a drive-in outside the gate. Yeah. So that was nice for the children. That was good for them. And uh, so there was, there was entertainment enough for them, I think, with what they had with the schools, the school dances and everything that they have, you know, their programs, their concerts and all that. So uh, there was more going on. It was like like a, a little hub city, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. little hub. Uh, yeah, yeah, village. it was growing. Yeah. yeah, and it's not as big as Española, but it's not. And now I understand almost everything is closed. I don't know. I'm not sure either. I I'll, I'll be finding. There. I'll be finding out soon. But see, yeah. like I, uh, we used to be able to go out to eat, Dad and I, and. Uh, According to Ernest, there was only one or two places to go eat, and those are the two places that I never like to go. <laughs> That's how it goes. So uh, I guess I wouldn't have gone. I guess I would have just cooked at home. Uh, they serve good food, don't get me wrong, because I did eat there, and they did serve good food. But I, I just didn't like the place. I don't know why. I just didn't feel good in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I used to like to go to like like Tavira's or the Taco House or you just go, you order, you take it home. Some of them, and those are good. And like the high, <coughs> the high country was right there in front of us, mm -hmm. and there was right. the high country restaurant with bar. You know, it became a restaurant later on, high class restaurant. Mm. And their back door, I, I could wait from my front door. <laughs> and and Ramona Rivas, one of the waitresses, 
She used to know that I used to like um, broccoli cut, uh, cheese soup. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> broccoli and cheddar, or yeah. So when she had it, she would call me on the phone and says, "Mississippi Hill, we have broccoli cheese soup here. Would you want some?" And I'd say, "Yes, yeah, send me a, uh, a, a the size of the thing that I used to like." Mm -hmm. And she uh, and she says, "I'll send it with Chris." one of the waitresses, and I says, no, I'll just have Eddie pick it up. <laughs> so I'd send Eddie out, but by the time Dad would be going across the meadow, Chris was already coming, so mm -hmm. they'd wait meet each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and so I, she would send mine. And one time Mary, your Aunt, Aunt Mary, called from California and for my birthday mm -hmm. and asked Che to uh, if if he would uh, fix me uh, a plate and ask her, what do you have? So they had, she said, T-bone, blah, 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 whatever. So she ordered a T-bone plate for me. I didn't know it was a surprise. And all of a sudden, here comes Shay with, oh, he called me. He called me and said, Mrs. Villa, how do you like your steak? I said, how do I like my steak? Yeah, I'm interested. He didn't tell me. I said, you're interested in a... Well, Jay, I said, I don't think you're going to like it. <clears throat> I don't think you like to fix steaks like the way I like them. Well, tell me anyway. Well, I like I like it almost burnt. <laughs> I told him. No, I like it well done, I told him. I do like it well done. I said, I can't eat meat if it's not well done. Oh, okay, that's all I wanted to know, he said. And I hung up. Things up on me. Oh, okay. All of a sudden, I'm looking out the window. That there's a picture window in my front room, you know. I'm looking out. I'm seeing Shay walking with a big old tray on his head. He was a tall guy, coming across the field. He knocks on my door. And I says, "Hey," he says, "Happy birthday." I open the door. He comes in, and it's a good thing I had cleaned my table. Mm. <laughs> and he sets my table. He brought his own plates, his silverware, everything. Like if he was sending me at the restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice. Oh my God. I, I was that a surprise? And was that really good? <laughs> <laughs> Glad it was good. Glad I was told good. Mary, oh, that was the best oh, surprise ever. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! I couldn't believe it. Mm. He was so good, that guy. So nice. I mean, to us anyway. Yeah. I don't know if to other people, you know. Sure, sure. But he. Uh, okay. So, so like I say, to me, Chama was good. He educated all my children. Those people, those teachers, have to be credited with that. They all went to college. They maybe they didn't finish, but they all went to college and they're all doing good. And yeah, uh, I mean, they. What what more can you ask them? Yeah. So so you were kind of saying like the the idea was. Go to go to Chama, and then great grandpa became mayor and started getting the clean water, and the, there's always a thing after the thing after the thing. Yeah, to where we build it up. Yeah. So then. Was there did did that kind of get in the way of the of the the retirement plan that you guys had initially set out for? Like, what well, I'm curious to know what what the what the goals were after after the retiring in yeah, Chama. What that, that, what what things went on? Yeah, that what you wanted to do after retiring initially when you guys were were planning the adventure. But there was a, well, actually, you know what? Retiring was never really mentioned. They were like, we won't work as hard because like people in those days did not retire. Mm. Yeah, I, I know they had started their retirement plans in the schools mm -hmm. and they had started their retirement uh, plan, plans with the county and the state because the state wasn't paying very good at one time. Mm -hmm. Here in New Mexico, like having a state job was was sure of a paycheck every 
month, but yeah, uh, but, uh, but it, uh, not good. They they it wasn't it wasn't a high pain state. Actually, it was under the push. Mm-hmm. It, it might still be. But uh, but now I understand that. See, there's no sawmills. There's uh, the railroad. Oh, we, uh, we had the railroad running. Yes, not the so- tour center. We had uh, not the tour train. We had a train that was going between Durango and uh, uh, Alamosa, Colorado, and into Denver. And mm-hmm. from Denver back. To Durango and now to, I mean, back to through New Mexico into Durango. So the train employed a lot of people from Java because it was a, a, a national ro- railroad, like uh, the same thing as the ATNSF. Mm-hmm. Actually, had Dad been forced to, not, let's say he had made it in business, when had been forced to go back to Telegraph. Maybe he would have been able to get a job there with the, uh, with the uh, Rio Grande. Mm-hmm. That was the name of it. Yeah. But uh, but he did he, he made it in his own business. Mm-hmm. So that was good. That's, That's good. Yeah. That was great. Yeah, we ran the Chev- the Chevron oil services and uh, uh, delivered fuel oil all over the county, within fifty mile radius. And uh, with the help of, it, like I say, we did have a lot of help from the children as they yeah, grew. Yeah, yeah. In fact, they came to the university and in the summertime for a couple of years. They went back in the summer to help all summer long. The younger ones, you know, as as they got as they got to uh, mm-hmm. to a certain age, mm-hmm. they. Uh, they just went back. They didn't go back the whole four years, but like the twins went back two years hmm. and worked those summers. They weren't too happy about that, but they went because mm-hmm. sure. they didn't have a job here. Yeah. Now Mary and Linda, uh, they stayed because they had a job. Mary and Linda had mm-hmm. a job, and they, when they had the job here, well, no, don't go lose it because you wanted to the fall and when you go back. Yeah. So just stay with it. Yeah. And, and they did. Okay. But, uh, and Larkin, Larkin went like two or three years. And Tommy went like one year and then he got a job here. So he was working here. And your grandpa, oh, your grandpa went into the service. Mm-hmm. Your grandpa went to the Navy. Yeah. So, uh, he was gone for two years to the Navy, so that was, that was okay. He he liked it when he was out there in Florida and got to go to Spain and Italy and all mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. So that was good that he got to go there. Yeah, yeah, it's experience. I was calling from Brindisi, Italy one, one night. The phone rings at this weird hour of the morning. But it's a different time up there. Yeah, yeah. I think it was like two o'clock here, and he said, "I says, where are you calling from?" Brenda said, "What the heck is that?" <laughs> well, here I am, mom. And yeah. that that actually that last supper up there, he sent it to me from Spain. Oh yeah! yeah. Wow. I have to clean it. Yeah. <laughs> it's clean. Yeah. Like Christy and I cleaned it the last time, and we haven't brought it down to clean it again. Mm. It's hard. It's a process, yeah. Uh, well, uh, you, uh, in Santa Fe, they have the tents people. Uh, you know, they do a lot of mm. tent work. Mm-hmm. Beautiful work, Santa Fe. Oh, those people, yeah, they do yeah. the tent work there. And uh, they know how to polish it really good. So I might ask Michael, he has some friends up there. Maybe he can give me some cream so that I can clean it. Yeah, yeah. It, it'll be easier than trying to use uh, baking right. soda and all that. Yeah, Windex. <laughs> <laughs> I go the old way. Yeah. Yeah, you know. It, yeah. Well, that's yeah. that's a ninety-two behind it. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> so so I'll so I'll say last question oh, okay. for the interview. I know. 
All right. This is the advice section for again, like let's say let's say for me or or the younger generation, the great grandchildren, is there any is there any like life advice or 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 something that you you want people to keep in mind while going through their life that you want to pass? Uh, I think I uh I think sometimes the the young parents are either like a little bit too strict and not let the, a child like just go let let them be but also as a parent mm. as a parent you should know where to take your children to see how they behave mm. You're going to take them to church, for instance. For instance, that's a very important thing. Cost going to church. Okay, you take a child to church, but you don't take him as a baby to show him off. He doesn't know that what church is all about. Just leave him at home if possible, or you stay home with with the baby. Let your husband go to church, and then you go to a different a different okay, uh, time yeah. of mass. Mm -hmm. Go by yourself, or you can pray. That's what you're going to church for not to take care of the baby. Now, you take a child, like a two, a one, two-year-old child to church, don't take them playbooks and Cheerios and crackers and mm. everything to eat. Leave the crackers, leave the cookies, leave the books and everything at home. You can t let them take a prayer book. You're going to pray. This is your prayer book. Yeah, you're going to pray with mama. You're going to pray with mom. And and they do. I remember when I used to take Ernest. You know, they were, he wanted to go see baby Jesus, especially at Christmas time. That's all he went to church for, see baby Jesus. Well, fine, that's good. That's all he needed to do. Mm -hmm. We went home, no problem. But this idea that they take him, they come into church with a big old backpack. And then the child starts taking out all this stuff during all mm. the while the church while the services are going on. No, 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 no. That, 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 mm. That's the parents' fault. Mm. That's the parents' fault. That's one of my advice. It, it's a parent that has to know when they can do this and your, your, your children will grow up Respecting others, respecting yourself, respecting wherever you're at. Mm -hmm. I that. That's my thought. So speaking of parenting, <laughs> speaking of parenting, this is kind of like a random question just for me. Okay. Because I don't have any kids, right? Okay. I have no children. I am Eddie the Fifth. Let's say hypothetically speaking... I'm having a I'm having a son. Am I? What's the? Am, am I? Is there? Is there? Am I obligated to to name him Eddie V Hill Six? Yeah. Or is is what's the uh, what's the Eddie? Yeah. What, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you said daddy. Yeah. So yeah, if I have a son. Yes. Eddie number six. Yeah. Sh am I? Is that something I should do, or something the family wants me to do, or, or what's your? Because uh, you you continued you helped continue the Eddie you know, line. You know, actually, by the time Eddie number six or or loose number six comes around, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's the end of this. Of you only are supposed to recognize your your relation till the fifth generation. Mm. You're the fifth generation. Mm. And my my mother in law used to say, if you if you get to know your fifth generation, you have reached heaven. Mm. She used to tell me that. Oh, but then, when because uh, when I, when, uh, when the, my first grandchild was born, she says I don't know. She says you might reach your fifth generation, although it was just the uh, second, you know. Yeah. Second, third, no. It was her, and then Gramps, and then 
your dad of your gramps than your dad. That was already for it. Yeah. See, now you're the you're the number five. Here's where it cuts. Mm -hmm. That you do not have to be count yourself related to anybody that's born beyond now. Hmm. I mean, you can because <laughs> because you you feel it. Yeah. Because I think, but they say no. Uh, now there's really by now there's no blood. That's the idea hmm. of that they don't like to that like would be like an intermarriage of uh, two related two relatives getting married, mm -hmm. two first cousins or mm -hmm. two second cousins getting yeah. married yeah. that the church doesn't really allow. Right, right. So, uh, so it, it, uh, no, I I would just continue to do. Uh, what uh, what is good what is good for your family what is good for you and whoever is your companion right right i'm just one yeah okay. yeah uh, of course uh, cuz i remember dad and i always said we we're, uh, we're going to uh, we, like we had the same goals in our, in our thinking about about how we were going to raise kids mm -hmm. we talked about it right about and, and he said, "But I want a big family." <laughs> and my answer was, "So we'll have a big family." <laughs> I mean, it was too, too it was too late to go back. I had already told him, "Okay, we get bothered me. I'm going to marry you." <laughs> Every single time he took me out, he said, "Did you know I'm going to marry you?" What do you expect? Finally, you say yes. <laughs> well, I'm assuming you wanted to. I'm assuming you wanted to, right? He was a charmer. <laughs> but and and some of some of the girls from from up north, no, the women, no, yeah, not anymore because most of them are gone. <laughs> but they were like a little bit jealous and mad. They they really didn't like me. And I one I remember telling one particular lady, he was here first, and you had him right in your at your fingertips. Why did you just let him slide through? You let him go right through your fingertips. Didn't keep him. Uh, he walked in. He, I used to say, he waltzed into the rooms, and I waltzed out with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because we used to love to dance. Yeah, yeah, nice. He's a he dancer. A dancer. And I used to love to dance. If you gave me three choices to go, picnic, movie, or dancing, I would go dancing. Okay, okay. Now if you gave me dancing and movie, I would go dancing. Hmm. If you gave me movie and picnic, I would go movie. Okay, okay, no, no I picnic. I used to love movies. Yeah. Oh, I knew every actor, uh, Lana Turner. No, I mean not personally, but yeah, yeah, oh, um, yeah. Oh you recognized gosh, them. I, yeah. I felt like I knew a person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I just used to love movies. I really did. My sister used to like movies too, and she used, she used to like to mingle with them when they were in a crowd just to be there. We, we, because she was living there in Hollywood, mm -hmm. they, were, they were so mingling that she knew she'd go just to mingle with them, even though they didn't know her. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why, but she had that. She really, mm -hmm. uh, really enjoyed it. Now, oh, I love movies. I think all of us, oh, my, my family, my, my brothers did too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, movies are great. But, I, well, there was really not too much else to do. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, but, for entertainment, but yeah. it was enjoyable, mm -hmm. and you get to know all those good actors. Oh man, they were, and they were good. Some not so, but sure, sure. Those are <laughs> your favorites, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there's always there's always those ones. Yeah. And in, in every pile, no matter what pile it is. Yeah. It's, um, could be a pile of mechanics. <laughs> Well, the top truck drivers. Yeah, yeah. Those are the good, and then there, yeah, yep, there's yep. the. Yeah. Know, sometimes you pick your level. <laughs> it's up to you. Yeah. See? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think 
I'm gonna call it there. I was gonna joke about where are you? Uh, are you? Are you on Twitter? Or? I just want to wish my grandson the best, the best, the best, the best. Thank you. Thank God you. bless him, and may you, all of you enjoy working with him. I hope you do. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So I did ask, are you on Twitter or uh, yeah. are you on the social medias at all? On Twitter or Facebook or any of those by chance? No, I don't think so. I, I don't know anything about that. Okay. We'll just, we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> they would have to sit and explain. <laughs> all right. I, I, all right. Perfect. That is that. Bye, Bye. everybody. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> boom, 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 boom.